Hunter's Grim Trollblood Warlock Unit Among the finest trackers to stalk the wilds of Western Amorn, Grim Angus and his band of scouts comprise the first line of defense for the United Creel. Ranging ahead the fighting forces, Grim's band identifies foes and sometimes eliminates them long before other warriors even know they are there. While once more of a loner working for the Creels, he has grown into an invaluable leader of the irregular skirmishers fighting alongside the frontline warriors of the new United Creels. When leaders like Madrak Ironhide and Gristle Bloodsong require the completion of missions in the most remote and inhospitable reaches, it is Grim Angus they turn. His mastery of the wilds and his skill at coordinating armed forces and stealthy ambushes have made his hand-picked team one of the greatest assets of the gathered Creels. Even his role with the Creels has evolved. Grim remains essentially an outsider, a fact he embraces unapologetically. In part, it is his outside perspective that makes him so valuable to the leaders who rely upon his opinions. He has no interest in spending his days surrounded by kin other than those who know how to survive in the wilds. Skinners and hunters who know when to keep their steps light and their mouths shut, and who will obey his signaled orders without hesitation. He has found the company of pigs to be particularly amenable, as they are less inclined to idle chatter and understand that survival in battle requires paying attention and looking out for one another. Grimm is ultimately a pragmatist who prefers a view of the world in tangible terms. He has worked particularly closely with Grizzle of Bloodsong in her efforts to protect the Creels while trying to carve out a new home for them. He understands what it takes to get through a difficult winter on the scraps one can find in barren landscapes and has applied those skills to good ends. He returns to his camp only long enough to allow his warriors and full blood trolls to feed and get some minimal rest before setting back out to fight again. His skills are in particular demand among the new territories and lands seized by the Creels to create lasting homes and strongholds. In all his tasks, Grimm is assisted by a pair of pigs that have become the core of his team, Mugs and Crump. And those, and those two came to prominence by proving themselves to be intelligent and crafty, as well as superlative hunters. In short order, the pair has learned to grasp Grimm's complex system of gestured signals and to fight smoothly alongside him even in silence, all three of them coordinating precise ambushes while tracking their enemies. Mugs and Crumps have passed along their expertise to other pigs in the hunting bands and often help keep them in line. Freeing Grimm to focus on the primary task at hand, Grimm has taken the time to teach Mugs how to use the snare gun and has come to entrust the pig with it. While Crump has proven quite capable of devising and implementing cunning snares even in the midst of battle. Together the team of hunters Grimm have proven to be more than the sum of their individual skills, working seamlessly together on the battlefield to bring down the most difficult targets. Grimm and those he leads have steadily become the eyes and ears of the United Creels, and its leaders know well just how blind and unready they would be without the tireless efforts of the, on the fringes of their lands. So yes, now he's got a little group so he doesn't have to use that cumbersome weapon to knock down people. So yeah, and pigs are actually really, really good at doing very particular tasks and developing skills of survival. Because unlike, you know, larger trollkins, they're usually just good at fighting. Pigs had to, well, since pigs are much smaller than their, than their you know, brothers, uh, these guys had to come up with more devious ways of survival so yeah he is even better with his uh, grim or his pig companions so i'm glad that he found some friends but let's see how much more dangerous those friends have made him as we discuss the mark 3 to mark 4 changes of grim into his hunter's grim form and we will start with grim himself with this stat line he is still a speed six he is still a a magic six he is still a mat six he is still a rat of eight uh, he still has a defense of 16, still has an armor of 15, and still has a control range of 12. And some of the abilities he still has is he's still tough because he's still a troll blood. Uh, he still has Pathfinder and he still has a dual attack, which is his basic thing. Um, he still has 
uh, takedown, so models disabled by a melee attack made by this model cannot make tough rolls, and they are removed from play. So they lose their bodies and anybody who tries to get those. Um, but let's go over his weapons. He still has his headhunter, and it still has a blood lure on it, which allows his models in his battle group to charge the enemy model without having to be forced. So I think that might be a little different from his original, but eh, that's still just as good. And then he still has his gun blade at a range 1 at POW 12, so he is still a dangerous there. But let's read his feet and see if that changed at all. Alright, it's on my mark, and this is actually a very, very good spell for a ranged army. Or very good feet, mind you. So what it does is, while in Grimm's control range, friendly faction models gain mark target, and their ranged attacks gain snipe. So... And that lasts for one turn. So what what uh, Mark Target does is other friendly faction models gain plus two to their ranged attack rolls against enemy models within five of a model with Mark Target while in their line of sight. And then it also stacks on a plus three to the range of models with Snipe. So yeah, so they get a plus three range and a plus two if they're shooting at somebody that's near another model in their army. So. That's a very dangerous feat, and very good if you can get your guys up there and in there, and if you're running a pig's force that's all range guys, yeah, that is probably going to happen 9 times out of 10. But let's go over his spells, see if anything changed there. Alrighty, looks like Mage Sight. He still has Mage Sight, but it has changed in the abilities that it does. So it used to be you place a 5 inch AoE in the Spellcaster's control range, and while it models in the AoE, the Spellcaster's battle group ignores force and cloud effects when determining line of sight and they ignore stealth. That's been removed. Eyeless Sight is now, while in the spellcaster control range, models in his battle group had gain eyeless sight. Pretty simple, although they don't have the line of sight drawing through forest, which is actually a really nice spell, but eh, that's how it changes sometimes. Uh, looks like we still have Mirage, so target friendly faction model slash unit gains apparition. And during your control phrase, a model with apparition can move or can be placed anywhere completely within two inches of its current location. Pretty much the same as the original. Uh, then we still have mortality, which is always a useful spell because you know heavy war beast or dodgy war beast are very nice if you can knock them down a notch. So mortality, uh, target model slash unit suffers minus two defense and arm, and then they lose tough and they cannot have damage removed from it for one round, which is a heck a good spell and I like to use it a lot whenever I have that opportunity and then we still have pursuit so if the target enemy model or slash unit advances during its activation one model in the spellcaster battle group that is in his control range can immediately make it full advance so if people are trying to run or trying to back off your guys can or at least one of you guys can follow up so that is a very a very useful ability and it, yeah outside of the mage site being changed up all the rest of its Pretty much the same thing as is. Uh, but let's go check out his assistants, his mugs and crump, and then we will see what they add to him. And we will start with mugs. Uh, we'll start with his stat line, it's still a speed six, so he's keeping up with this Trollkin Warcaster. Um, his, his mat is still a five, rat is still a six, which is pretty decent. Uh, defense still a 14, armor 12. He is a pig. They don't have usually a very high armor. Uh, he does, however, have tough and pathfinder, and he also has a dual attack, so he can attack with both his melee and ranged weapons at the same activation. Uh, he still has reposition 3, although I don't think it's a reposition for the entire force. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, it says at the end of this model slash unit's activation in which it did not run or fail a charge, this model can advance up to 3. And I suppose because of the wording on there, it does go to the whole unit. So there you go. Uh, he still has takedown, so he was, you know, probably taught by by uh, his warlock how to take those guys out. Um, and this guy is the guy who's given the snare gun, so it automatically knocks people down. Um, it's still a range eight, uh, a little bit less rat because he's well, he's not he's not grim himself, so that's how it works. Uh, but still knocked down, so, and he can still shoot that into melee. And then he can still clock him with his little power 8x that he has there, so. Yeah, no, he's still pretty, uh, pretty much the same that he was before. Um, still adding, uh, adding that additional gun makes Grimm's job probably a lot easier. And of course, all these guys are companions with Grimm, so they will have to, uh, they will have to make it work like that, because they are a unit. And if Grimm goes, so do they, so if you're playing a multi-warlock game, 
and you're playing with Grimm and he dies, well, they, they his little assistants kind of go with him, so. Alrighty, let's move on to Crump and see if he has changed at all. Uh, he's still a companion to the unit. Uh, he still has Tough, he still has Pathfinder, and he was given dual attack because, well, he is now a warlock group and most of those guys have it. Uh, he still has his takedown ability because, well, of course, he is still with Grimm, so that is something that has. Looks like he lost circular vision, but everybody gained circular vision, so it's not really a loss because everybody has a 360 degree sight now and there is no backstrike, so yeah, it's something that they took away. Didn't really make any difference, he already had it, so. Uh, and then the ability he still has is Trapper. Although Trapper has been reduced, it is no longer a 5-inch AoE, it is just a 3-inch template anywhere within 2 of this model. And model, the template remains in play for one round, living in undead models entering or ending their activation in the template suffer a POW 10 damage roll, and models damaged by Trapper become knocked down. So, that's still useful, it's still a special action, so you can either choose to drop one of those things or shoot, or, you know, charge or something like that, so it is still a special action. Uh, his weapons still include his blunderbust at a range 8, a POW 12, and it's a... And he is a gunner, so he can do that while in melee. And then he has his hand axe as well. Not, <laughs> you probably don't want to get these guys in melee if you can avoid it. So yeah, keep these guys at range. So, but yeah, having trapper really locks it down. Unfortunately, it's not a five-inch AOE anymore. It is just three, but it still does basically the same thing. And it does not affect flight models, which makes sense since they're not walking on the ground. Um, yeah, so he is, he got a little bit better since uh, Grim no longer has to handle his little snare gun all by himself. He has an assistant to do that for him, so he can knock people down and just go pop pop and take them out. Um, yeah, honestly, he's just the, he's the same warcaster that he was before. He just has some more assistance to, you know, make him even more deadly on the battlefield. Huh? Well, 